Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm dressed in kind of quirky pastel fashion that is slightly inspired by Catherine, aka Dollightful. And that is because uh, Catherine sent me this little surprise package in the mail, and today we're going to unbox it and see what she sent to me. Quick disclaimer, I know I did not nail her style. <laughs> Catherine's style is extremely unique and includes a lot of bright colors, pastels, rainbows, um, and so I don't actually have the right kind of accessories. <laughs> but I did my best. Uh, I just kind of dressed in some pastels and did my hair in a different way than I normally do. Um, I have this little hair clip which Catherine actually sent to me. And I'm wearing the friendship bracelet that I need one for me, one for Catherine, and one for Natalie from Doll Motion. If you're not already familiar with my channel, I'm a doll artist as well, and ever since the very start of Catherine's channel, she's been inspiring me, and she inspired me to actually start my own channel for doll customizing. Since then, we've done a couple of really cool collaborations together, along with Natalie from Doll Motion, and Catherine has become a friend, often giving me great advice, encouragement, and also supporting my channel, which I'm so grateful for. And now she sent me the surprise and I can't wait to see what it is. Okay, so I have just put a piece of paper on here to cover up the addresses, of course. And let's open this up. There we go. Okie doke. Ooh. All right, so at the very top we have packing peanuts. <laughs> And I can see, <gasps> they're socks with little stitches on them. Oh, it's so cute. Adorable. Thank you, Catherine. Let's see, there is a note here. Hi, Diana. I was so excited about our little bunny BJD that I just had to send you one. Oh my God. Please don't feel obligated to make a video about it or anything. I just want it. I just want you to have it as a gift. Although if you do end up customizing it, I know it looks so cute, Catherine. Ah, that's so awesome! Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited now. Okay, so if you haven't seen Catherine's recent video, she did create her very first BJD, which was a cute little bunny, um, and she customized it, of course, in an adorable way. And oh my gosh, I can't believe she sent me one. I'm so excited. Okay, let me get these packing peanuts out of our way here. Okay, so you have some cute stickers, very colorful stars. Honestly, like, if I, <laughs> If I had had these before opening the box, I should have like stuck them all over my face or something for, for the intro because like I did not know how to be all cute rainbow pastel. Ooh, this looks like a yummy snack. It kind of looks like, maybe it's like a cookie, it looks like it's kind of like a cookie stick with chocolate in the middle. So like a, almost like a reverse Pocky. That's kind of cool. Ah, in here must be the bunny. It says bunny doll. And I guess it also says bunny doll in Korean, but I totally don't know any Korean whatsoever, so. And this is a really pretty ribbon also. It's one of my favorite colors. Okay. Okay, all right, so we've got all these pieces here. This is this is gonna be a project for me, guys, because I don't know anything about strung BJDs. Like, I've never had one that's made of resin. So, um, just the vinyl, you know? So, this is a totally different thing for me. So, this is really, really exciting. <gasps> There's the bunny's head. Oh my gosh, look how cute. And there's a magnet for the back of the head. And here's the little loop that you use the elastic. I'm gonna have to watch her video again like 10 more times <laughs> to uh, make sure that I'm, I'm gonna string him correctly and everything and figure out how to customize him. But there's this, oh, there we go. There's his body. And this looks like a leg. 
and the other leg. And the two little itty bitty arms. Oh my gosh. So there he is, the little bunny. And she also gave me a piece of elastic here and the little metal loop. Um, which, again, I'm going to have to watch her video <laughs> a few more times <laughs> to figure out exactly how to do that because I don't remember. I'm going to have to figure out how I want to customize them. Oh, so cute! So thank you so much, Catherine, for this wonderful gift. I'm really, really excited um, to figure out how I'm going to customize this cute little guy. Um, so I am going to... Go think about that and I will get back to you guys when I have a plan. Before coming up with the design, I wanted to test out some of the doll eyes that were sent to me by crafteyes.com a while back to see if they would work for this bunny. I really wanted to use this pair in bright turquoise and I thought it would look really lovely to dress the bunny in shades of pink with turquoise as the accent color. However, even though the eyeball is like the right size, the iris itself is way too small and it makes the bunny look super creepy. <laughs> but this pair of darker blue glitter eyes is slightly larger with larger irises and that looks a lot better. As I brainstormed ideas for the bunny's overall design, I decided that since the doll was made and sent to me from Korea, where Catherine lives, that I would dress the doll in hanbok a traditional Korean garment which, for women, consists of the jyogori, the basic upper garment which is like a jacket, and chima, or skirt, made of fabric typically gathered or pleated into a waistband. The hanbok is still worn by Koreans today at times, such as semi-formal occasions, festivals, and celebrations, and those that are worn today are usually patterned after those worn in the Joseon dynasty. I spent some time researching the hanbok, as well as traditional accessories often paired with them, and drew a lot of inspiration from Arang Hanbok on Instagram, a contemporary fashion hanbok retailer located in Seoul. I put together this little mood board featuring Catherine's artwork of her bunny doll. I've decided to paint my bunny all white and give her some subtle pink accents and blushing. For her hanbok, I'm going to use this fuchsia brocade fabric that I love so much, along with either hot pink or turquoise in order to create a pleasing color contrast. I picked out a huge bunch of different ribbons that I might use as accents, because on such a small scale, even a narrow ribbon can be a prominent accessory. I also plan to create a norige for her as the finishing touch. Norige are decorative ornaments usually made of silk strands or threads that are braided into knots and often include pendants to attract health and beauty. Some even contained useful objects such as perfume, incense, sewing tools, or even instruments of self-defense, popular for women in the Joseon era. I did just a little bit of sanding on the pieces before I started painting, just to help the paint stick, but I didn't need to do much. Then I just went to town painting on coat after coat of white acrylic paint. Since the bunny is such a dark color, it will take a while to get the white to be fully opaque. I watered down the paint a bit at first in order to create smooth, thin coats. But as the process went on, I realized that having the texture of brush strokes on the paint job was actually a plus for something like a bunny which has fur. There was no need to worry about it being perfectly smooth because I'd rather it give the impression of having strands of fur. I have no idea how many coats it took because it was a lot. <laughs> I followed Catherine's tutorial for adding a bit of fabric around the joints in order to aid with holding poses and to help prevent paint from chipping off in those areas. I simply glued in the tiny pieces with fast grab tacky glue. Once I was finally satisfied with the paint, I used some Liquitex matte varnish on the pieces to finish them off. I did start to do the same for the head when I realized that it made no sense since I hadn't done the face details yet. I start with some pink soft pastels in various shades. I'm going to use these to create some subtle pink color inside the ears as well as for gently blushing the face.
For the outline of the eyes, I'm going to use a light pink color. This is going to be very simple and a little bit cartoony, with a few little eyelashes and not much more detail than that. I do add a little eyelid crease with one tiny pink line on each side. Since this face-up was so incredibly simple, which I must say was so refreshing and nice, it only took two layers of color and two sprays of Mr. Super Clear to seal them before I could call this bunny's face finished. I so wish every face-up was this quick and easy. Before we can make the bunny's outfit, which I've been looking forward to the most, we need to string the pieces together to make the doll complete so we can create the pattern. I re-watched Delightful's video in order to see exactly how the stringing worked and followed Catherine's method of using some bent wire as a tool for pulling the elastic through the right holes. This was a little bit tricky at first, but very straightforward, so it didn't end up taking too long. Next, let's give our bunny some eyes. I clip off the extra plastic bit on the craft eyes because there won't be enough room inside the head for that. I'm using some of this tacky putty from the craft store, which is also what I use to keep my smart doll's eyes in place. I smush it into the head using the end of a paintbrush to help me, just like Catherine did in her video. And then I followed the instructions for tying and securing the elastic and the metal ring from Catherine's video as well. It was actually a lot easier to do than I thought it would be, so I was very happy. <laughs> For one last finishing touch on the doll's body, I'm taking a bit of light pink paint and adding some toe beans to the feet and little pads to the hands as well for maximum cuteness. Before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like us. On topics including illustration, design, photography, fine art, freelancing and entrepreneurship, and so much more. Skillshare classes are for beginners, pros, dabblers, masters, and include a combination of video lessons and a class project, along with feedback from a community of millions. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level, with most classes about 60 minutes and with short lessons to fit any schedule. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, so you can stay focused and go wherever your creativity leads you. I've been taking a bunch of Skillshare classes lately, and one that I'm really excited about is Be Your Own Boss, Strategies for Launching Your Creative Career, taught by letterer and designer Martina Flor. I'm always interested in learning more about the best practices for creative freelancing and being self-employed, and in this class, Martina shares her personal experience and expertise to provide students with practical tools and useful tips to start and manage a creative business. I am being 100% genuine when I tell you that I am so happy to work with Skillshare as a sponsor because I truly believe that using the internet to connect people across the globe, to share what they know, to teach and to learn creative skills, I think that's the best thing to come out of this age of global technology, if you ask me. Right now, Skillshare is offering a special promotion. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. I highly encourage you to click on the link and try out Skillshare today. And enjoy that feeling of infinite possibility that you get when you browse through their thousands of inspiring classes and realize that there is literally so much to learn and it's all at your fingertips. I love it. <laughs> Now we can make her hanbok. I started out by creating a rough rectangle shape for the skirt or chima. I fold pleats into the skirt to test out that look and determine how wide the skirt piece needs to be. In order to cut down on unnecessary bulk, I'll simply pleat the front part of the skirt so that it looks nice, and the back will be left without pleats. For the jacket, or jiogori, I create a pattern by first tracing the outline of the doll's upper body on paper. Then I sort of sketch out the shape of the jacket pieces, cut those pieces out, and hold them up to the doll to get an idea of how to adjust them until I'm happy with the shapes. Then I cut the jacket pieces out of my magenta satin and cut a skirt piece from the brocade fabric. Especially on such a small scale, it's absolutely crucial that we apply fray check to the edges of these pieces so that they will stay intact despite the delicate nature of the fabric. Thinking this will make it easier on myself later, I hem up the bottom of the skirt first. Then I arrange the top into the pleats that I want and pin them into place. Once I'm satisfied with the placement, I hand sew them in. I sew up most of the back of the skirt then place it on the doll and sew up the top so that it won't fall off. 
I was going to use a snap button here, but it's just so small that the snap button would cause bulk and would be tricky to place just right. I almost never redress my customs anyway, so I'm going to go with this option. Now for the jacket pieces. After hand stitching the shoulder seams and sewing in the sleeves, I finished the ends of the sleeves with some pale pink ribbon attached with tacky glue instead of trying to sew something so delicate. It truly ends up looking a lot neater this way. The ribbon creates the illusion of sleeve cuffs and it looks really cute. I sew up the sides of the jacket and then try it on the doll. It looks so adorable. I determine the length of the jacket and then pin and hem the bottom. Then I hem the side of the jacket that will be on the outside and go all the way up and across the collar for a nice edge. I use more of the pink ribbon to create the look of the collar as it goes around the neck. I glue this on and use some mini clothespins to keep it in place while it dries. Then I add another stripe of color to the top of the collar with a deep purple ribbon that's about half the width of the pink one. Next I'm using more of this purple ribbon to create the gorium or the strings attached to the breast of the jacket to tie it closed. I really wanted to tie this the correct way in order to make it as accurate as possible even though it was so hard on such a tiny scale. Nevertheless, I watched a helpful video, which is linked below in the description, to learn how to tie the knot properly, and I found a way to make it work. I did need to secure it with glue in order to keep it positioned in the right spot, but it ended up looking very nice and pretty accurate for something so tiny. I didn't have quite as much success figuring out how to make the norige on such a small scale, however. I thought it would be really simple to create a little tassel out of embroidery thread or string and simply add a bead, but I was really struggling to find a bead and the right kind of thread to complement the colors of the handbook and look realistic on such a small scale. After some frustration and a lot of different beads, <laughs> I finally settled on some pink thread and a simple clear bead. I tucked the loop beneath the jacket so that it would hang in place over the skirt.
For a final detail, I glued a little pink flower beside her ear as a cute accessory to balance out her look. And now, I think she's finished. I think this little bunny turned out so cute, and I'm so happy that Catherine sent this doll to me to customize. I don't usually gravitate toward animal dolls, so this was something totally different for me, both in that respect and in the sense that this is technically my first resin ball jointed doll. It felt so special to be customizing a doll that a friend actually designed and printed herself, and I want to say a huge thank you to Catherine for the opportunity. It was also refreshing to work on such a small scale, and I actually really enjoyed hand sewing the tiny little Hanbok. I think it would be so cool to have more BJDs in this size. I think that I was somewhat inspired by one of Catherine's really old videos um, from like the beginning of her channel where she customized a unicorno and dressed it in um, a traditional Korean attire for a wedding as like a Korean bride. And um, I, I didn't really think of this until after, but I think that might be part of what gave me the idea to do like a hanbok for this this bunny character that is from Catherine. So I'm going to actually link that video in the description below if you want to check it out. By the way, I actually made this diorama for a display at the library where I work part time. And I just happened to finish it like the day before I was going to do the photo shoot for the little bunny. And the scale ended up being perfect. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had a great time. If you're new to my channel and you've just discovered it because you're a fan of Dollightful, I would like to invite you to check out all my custom doll videos that are on my channel. And if you'd like, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel as well. I'd like to say a big thank you to all of my patrons, as always, because without them, none of this doll magic would be possible. If you enjoy my videos and would like to help me make more of them, check out Patreon. I'd also like to remind you that the Doll Fairy now has an official shop with apparel, accessories, charms, stickers, and lots of cool stuff for sale. I designed all of the merch on thedollfairy.com, so head over to check it out and sign up for the email list to find out the inside scoop about upcoming sales and events. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll see you again very soon for more doll magic. Bye!